Have you ever felt like your online gaming experience has been unfair? That no matter how hard you try, you can't escape the clutches of skill-based matchmaking? Or even that online gaming now feels like more of an artificial experience than proper matchmaking? If you answered yes to any of those questions, you may be entitled to financial compensation. Wait, no, hang on. Long script. If you answered yes to any of those questions, you're in the right place. Because today, I will be showing you how major video game developers manipulate their players using online matchmaking. And no, not that kind of matchmaking, but this kind of matchmaking. You see, today's online gaming world is plagued by one simple idea player retention leading to sales. In order for you to understand how games build and take advantage of your retained attention, I'm going to explain or do my best to explain skill-based matchmaking, a term that you're likely familiar with, and engagement-based matchmaking, the darker and more manipulative of the two. We'll go over published research, articles, and first-hand accounts to show the effects of the what, the how, and the why of both types of matchmaking. Some of the information I'm going to cover is denser than the fruitcake that nobody eats at the Christmas party. Seriously, does anybody even like fruitcake? But if you stick with it, I promise it'll make the big picture make sense and you'll have a better understanding of how gaming companies try to manipulate you. Skill-based matchmaking is the boogeyman of online gaming. If someone is frustrated with their matches, they tend to immediately cast blame on it. The issue is that most players don't fully understand what skill-based matchmaking's purpose is, how it works, and why it makes online games feel the way that they do, all of which will be covered in this portion of the video. To be clear, skill-based matchmaking does not affect every game equally. With that said, my goal is to present the facts and use examples from online games to back those facts up. A large part of the issue is that developers aren't forthcoming with how they use SBMM. The idea of skill-based matchmaking isn't a secret, but the impact it has from game to game isn't very clear. By definition, skill-based matchmaking is self-explanatory. It's a matchmaking algorithm that pairs you with similarly skilled players in online games. At first glance, being paired with enemies and teammates of similar skill doesn't sound that bad, but is it really that straightforward? If you've interacted with this topic on Reddit, Twitter, or even here on YouTube, you most likely know that that is not the case. Skill-based matchmaking's initial algorithm was created using the Bayesian inference a statistical model based on a theory of probability called the Bayes theorem. This theory was created by Thomas Bayes in 1763 to try to find the probability of an event based on prior knowledge and conditions related to that event. But in terms even a Call of Duty player could understand, Bayes stated that the outcome changes based on new information. For example, if you set a personal best while gaming and come away with a win with a ton of kills, the algorithm makes note of that and plans ahead. Bayes also says that while using his theory, you can't measure probability by a group, only by an individual. For skill-based matchmaking, a single person would be judged based on their own skills and not the skills of the player base or their teammates. The Bayesian inference uses Bayes' theory to record data and adapt based on the information it collects. New information is taken in and the statistical output is adjusted based on what is learned. In the world of gaming, it adjusts the skill levels of your opponents based on every match that you play in. This is why skill-based matchmaking makes your lobbies feel like you're constantly being evaluated and given a score based on your performance. It's quite literally a job evaluation, an issue we'll be diving into shortly. I bet Thomas Spades would be rolling in his grave if he knew his work was used so that Nicki Minaj could shoot Homelander with a 50 cal. What a time to be alive, folks. Speaking of modern gaming, the Bayesian inference was first used at a large scale by Microsoft in 2006 to develop the matchmaking algorithm for Halo 3. Its popularity began to spread and was used as a baseline for matchmaking in several major gaming titles. League of Legends, CSGO, and Overwatch are just some of the notable titles that started implementing skill-based matchmaking using this model. But all of those games have something in common, a ranked mode, an option that more serious players can indulge in to test their strength and skill, an option where wins, losses, and teamwork actually matter. This is skill-based matchmaking's first and original purpose. Its second purpose, which is something that's 
emerged much more recently is to protect weaker players from being dominated by those at the top. I say weaker in quotation marks because again, it's only based on what data it collects. That data could easily be skewed if you're either having a rough patch of games, if you're camo grinding and don't care about your KD, or if you just don't care about your KD at all. The idea is that less experienced or more casual players would tend to stop playing if they felt as though they had no chance of winning. If these less experienced players are kept in their skill bracket, they'll blissfully be protected by people who are either more naturally skilled or have more time to put into the game than they do. But how does skill-based matchmaking enforce these two purposes? Let's first take a look at how SBMM plays a role in ranked matchmaking. Most ranked systems are based on the original ELO rating system, which was created by Hungarian professor Arpad ELO. Its original purpose was rating chess players, but has since evolved to become a more common system for measuring success in team sports. That of course expands to stuff like video games and esports. The idea is simple. The better a player or a team of players perform, the higher their rating goes. That rating is adjusted based on performance against better or worse rated opponents, giving the winner a higher boost if they overcome a more difficult opponent. If you're Platinum 1 but beat a Diamond 1 team, you'll earn more skill rating. The opposite, of course, is also true. Remember, the SBMM algorithm's job is to keep tabs on you and learn about your performances. If you have an above average performance, you have a higher chance of playing better players. This eventually leads to a continuous cycle where the rating or rank you earn is responsible for how the SBMM algorithm treats you and how the algorithm is equally responsible for putting you in lobbies where you will either earn or lose rating, which leads us to one of the most intriguing parts of skill-based matchmaking. The game already knows who's going to win or lose any given match. Truth is, the game was rigged from the start. This may seem obvious at first based on what we just covered. The team with the better overall stats or ranking is clearly going to be favored, just like any given sports matchup. With that in mind, let's take a look at how skill-based matchmaking protects lower skilled players, or if it even does. As we've established, SBMM is intended to keep players in games of their own skill bracket. Okay. Fine, that's perfectly normal for ranked modes, but over time, that concept has bled more and more into casual playlists. Developers believed that more casual players needed to be quote-unquote protected in order to enjoy the game. From what we've established so far, the moment a casual player has a good game, they're going to be paired against significantly better players. This makes the experience miserable for players who have no interest in competing every game they play in. The SBMM system essentially backfires and not only doesn't protect lower skilled players, but punishes them for getting better. Through what I've gathered, players of any skill have no love for skill-based matchmaking. There are some that would argue that it should exist, but they may honestly not realize how much it's taken over. Max Hoberman, the lead multiplayer developer for Halo 2, 2 and Halo 3 explain how skill-based matchmaking was originally intended to work back in the day. Part of this thread brings up the goal of providing variability across matches. This was done by creating three different experiences. First, an evenly matched game. Second, one where you had the upper hand. And third, one where the other team had the upper hand. Max's reasoning for creating these three different experiences and not constant evenly matched games was very simple. Evenly matched games were the most stressful of the three scenarios. Sound familiar? In modern gaming, skill-based matchmaking wants to create an equal or fair playing field for each and every match. The issue is that people don't want that feeling when casually gaming. Obviously, public lobbies can get competitive. If you've ever been in a COD lobby for more than two seconds, then you know exactly what I mean, but that's not the purpose that they serve. Players need an outlet for simple social gaming when desired. They're inconsequential fun as Max refers to it as. A foreign concept for some people, I know. If we circle back to Max's Twitter thread, we can see that he views modern skill-based matchmaking as a huge issue. His argument against it is that it tries too hard to create an evenly matched game. This creates a continuously stressful environment for players in both ranked and casual games alike. Nobody wants to play the game Game like it's their job every single match, not even the people whose job it actually is. When I was trying to unlock camos in Modern Warfare 3, it felt like I was playing against some of the most passionate esports players of all time. 
of course there were also games where the lobbies were turned and i clearly had the upper hand when i shouldn't have but that's a point that's important to remember for later max's statements also emphasize that skill-based matchmaking was significantly deprioritized outside of ranked games in halo 3. casual game modes gave more priority to location and server connection when matching players together giving those true random match made lobbies games like modern warfare 3 and halo infinite seem to do the exact opposite sbmm is so hellbent on creating a competitive experience that you're constantly fighting for your life in normal lobbies instead of immediately being placed into a game on a nearby server the game searches for the most competitive experience to give you again you're evaluated on a game to game basis with each performance being taken into account it's honestly frustrating and kills any intention of just playing for fun now we've established what skill-based matchmaking is, a complex learning algorithm that adapts based on your performance, how it works, keeping you within your own skill level, and why it acts the way that it does to create a competitive and quote-unquote equal feeling to matchmaking. But many gamers would agree that having games decided by a razor-thin margin isn't interesting. It's just stressful. So what if I told you that skill-based matchmaking was only a piece of the larger puzzle? A case study published by UCLA on replacing skill-based matchmaking states that matchmaking based on fairness is not optimal for engagement. A replacement for skill-based matchmaking that's not based on fairness sounds good, right? Well, surprisingly, their solution was darker and much, much worse. Enter. The sad truth about modern gaming is that it's designed to maximize player retention at any cost. As noted here by popular YouTuber Wildcat, online gaming tends to feel manipulative. It's an artificial experience to keep you playing whether you like it or not. EOMM or engagement based matchmaking is our second culprit in the main form of manipulation that we'll be taking a look at. Unlike SBMM, the name unfortunately doesn't really roll off the tongue. Also unlike SBMM, it purposefully and directly manipulates how your game plays if this were a courtroom you would be able to prove that engagement based matchmaking has intent behind its actions and we're going to do just that just like before let's break down the what the how and the why of eomm in the study published by ucla that i briefly mentioned the authors involved wanted to create a way to retain players attention their proposed solution eomm is a combination of multiple components working together to create one attention retaining experience in their words quote to maximize the overall player engagement or equivalently minimize the overall player disengagement. The two major components are the skill-based matchmaking algorithm and the engagement prediction algorithm. SBMM, as we established, is able to track your stats, predict winners of matches, and adapt to new information. The engagement prediction model learns your gaming habits from when you're most likely to quit, when you're most likely to keep playing, and everything in between. These algorithms are supposed to create the most mathematically optimal experience and are notably meant to be adjusted for quote unquote specific applications. This means that game developers can choose how strict or not strict these algorithms are when matchmaking. Remember, the UCLA math nerds claimed that quote unquote fairness was not the most satisfying option for online gaming. Max Hoberman, the Halo developer that I mentioned earlier, also came to the same conclusion. Though the two parties' goals were similar, their solutions could not be more different. Max's ideal solution was creating variety in gameplay to appeal to the interest of the player. This organically created a desire for players to get better at the game making them want to keep playing. Math nerds, sorry, I'm sure that they're nice people, but I'm gonna continue to call them that, simply want to minimize the time the users spend away from the game. Doing so was to reduce what is called churn. This term refers to the time players spent disengaged from or not playing the game. EOMM is meant to reduce churn for players and keep them plugged into the matrix, so to speak. It analyzes your gameplay habits and maximizes what keeps you playing. I don't know about you, but that sounds extremely manipulative to me. It's a psychological tactic that gets you to stick around by manipulating your emotions. And in case you're skeptical about this, the math nerds stated that EOMM has a 15% higher effectiveness at reducing churn or keeping you on the game. The more EOMM deployed, the more time people spend playing the game. 
And that doesn't mean that players necessarily enjoy playing under these conditions either. A lot of first-hand accounts that I've come across are people despising how matchmaking works. And if that's the case, how are developers still getting us to play these games? EOMM is meant to keep you engaged at all times, but that's easier said than done. So how is this accomplished? We've established that the complex web of algorithms EOMM uses tends to place you in somewhat similarly skilled lobbies, but more importantly, they also know your individual gaming pattern. Look at it like this. TikTok is one of, if not the greatest app at retaining its users attention and keeping them scrolling. That's not by accident either. They feed you a specific string of videos tailored to you to keep you interested. Not every video shown to you is going to hold your attention. Some may be ads, some may not interest you at all, but eventually they learn which videos you're more likely to watch all the way through and which ones make you close out of the app. Matchmaking is built the same way. The difficulty of the set of matches that you are placed in go through intense peaks and valleys. That's because the game knows when you can handle a string of rough matchups before you quit. It knows when to reward you with an easy lobby to capitalize on that feeling of finally winning, and it even knows that some players are more likely to quit after a win, so it's constantly feeding them closer or more difficult matchups. Remember, all of this is meant to reduce your churn risk or the likelihood of you quitting. This is why players tend to report encountering much easier lobbies after taking an extended break. It's the perfect method to get you hooked back into playing, no matter the game. Again, I'll refer you back to Wildcat statement on Fortnite and how manipulative it felt after they had won a few games. EOMM uses a similar psychology to slot machines to keep players engaged, promising that taste of victory after not having achieved it for so long. The difference is that the EOMM system actively learns about your habits and adjusts to them, allowing it to manipulate how you play the game. Everyone has a streak of addictive nature in them, some more than others. Regardless, EOMM looks to bring out that addictive nature in players, even if it makes them miserable. Just take a look at this official statement for player retention in MW3 versus MW19. MW3 hasn't set any records for sales or anything like that, but the users are playing it more than the game that was released shortly before a global pandemic. According to Call of Duty themselves, the retention rate is through the roof. MW3 is also the game that's generated the most buzz about SBMM and EOMM that I've seen in recent years. Now we look at why EOMM affects online gaming the way that it does. To answer that as simply as possible, money. These algorithms, the desire for maximum optimization, the constant battle for your attention, it's all in the name of making more money. Revisiting the slot machine analogy, the more time you spend getting that rush from the machine, the more money you put into it. If you're playing Call of Duty all the time, then the chances of you spending money on their store bundles rise significantly. For example, I got back into playing Halo Infinite recently. My brothers and I were playing it consistently for a few weeks, and because I was playing it more, I started spending money on cosmetics. But I mean, come on this bundle is the biggest nostalgia bait ever and i was more than happy to take it but my point still stands there's a whole deeper discussion that could be had about microtransactions themselves being manipulative but for now we can see that the matchmaking algorithm keeps players in the game causing them to spend more money. Video games are just as much of a mainstream way to consume content as social media, television shows, or movies. They are competing for the most valuable thing in the world, your time. Developers know this and they're eager to take advantage of whatever keeps you playing their game. The more you play their game, the less likely it is you're playing another game or consuming another form of media. Therefore, the less likely it is you're spending money on something else. Gaming companies are fighting for your attention and ultimately, your wallet. Yearly releases like Call of Duty and FIFA only need to keep your attention for that year too. If one is bad, then there's always the next year to look forward to, another purchase to be made. At the end of the day, the entities behind all the major gaming titles are huge corporations. Their goal is to meet certain expectations for shareholders and generate as much profit as possible, even if their product suffers. And it doesn't always. The balance between a fun game and keeping your attention is much more complicated. They can both be true there is a clear priority in today's market. That being said, there's only so much a player base can take before they hit their breaking point. Many games have driven players away because they feel like the system is rigged against them. What point is there in playing a rigged game?
Online gaming is sadly a much more targeted form of advertisement than it's ever been. It employs complicated and possibly unethical tactics that manipulate players to spend more time playing the game without them even realizing it. Gamers are taken advantage of through matchmaking algorithms that they have no control over. Whether skill-based matchmaking or engagement-optimized matchmaking, they have no choice but to play under unfair rules. The engagement that's formed from these players is what is turning online gaming into into this artificial experience. Organic fun and enjoyment are slowly being eroded in the name of optimization. Hopefully this trend eventually breaks and developers aren't building their games around that TikTok retention mentality. Consumers around the world would be more likely to engage with games if they were truly having fun, not artificially being forced to engage with the game. But now, regardless of what happens, you are equipped with the knowledge to understand how you are being manipulated. Remember, skill-based matchmaking is the reason you can't can't stop competing for your life even in normal public lobbies, while engagement optimized matchmaking is the reason you can't stop playing despite that. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more like it, consider hitting that like and subscribe button. If you found it useful, share it with a friend to teach them something. And of course, as always, stay classy.